So yeah, it's uh, it's been a while. Hey, what's up, folks? It's the Methodical AAA, and uh, uh, I guess given current events, it would seem that I have a little bit more time to make videos. So here I am. Yeah, I guess I'm here to talk about Onward. It's funny because I really was not gonna make a video about this or even really see the movie because, as far as I knew, I had to actually go outside to the movie theater. Which, not even just because of the coronavirus, just in general, going to the movie theater for the longest has just been so tedious i i hate people at the i fucking hate people at the movie theaters i really do people just don't know how to act man you are in a crowded space with a bunch of other people act accordingly but no it's like yo i can't forget this like when i was oh my god all right I know I'm supposed to be talking about Onward, but of course I always gotta do tangents. When, <laughs> when I was watching Avengers Endgame, Cat walked into the, the elevator. Yeah, like we all knew what this scene was referencing. But nah, of course there was this dumbass in the audience that had to spell it out for anyone who had any doubts, right? Before we get started, would anyone like to get out? Yeah, we know. Yo, it's like, what is wrong with you? Are you on? Are you physically unable to keep your mouth shut for extended periods of time? Is 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 that is that what we do when I, this was hot in these streets? Really? Bottom line, um, it was very unlikely I was going to see this film outside of the comfort of my own home. I remember there was this uh, a bunch of articles saying Dis <laughs> Disney's first uh, openly gay character or Disney's first uh, openly LGBT character or something like that. And I'm like, first off, that was a fucking lie. And second, why, 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 why? I mean, I'm not saying why make the character gay or LGBT. I'm just saying, why do you feel the need to advertise this? Why do I bring this up? Because watching the film, I saw how LGBT representation could have been done. The Manticore and Laurel. Watching the trailer for the movie, we know that the relationship between the brothers, that's going to be the forefront of the film and them trying to get their dad back. Uh, like, you know, like we see a little bit of the Manticore in the trailer. That's all I thought that we were going to see of her. Laurel, their mom, she shows up. Yo, Laurel is a real one. My sons are in danger. I'm finna find. Oh, you you think I'm gonna stay here? Nah, -uh, nah. Oh, word. This Manticore knows what's up. Yo, I'm bringing her with me. I don't care. But yeah, like they went on their little side adventure, and I was like, all right. First off, Corey or the Manticore. I actually really like Corey. She's just a fun character, and her teaming up with Laurel. If it was up to me, I would make this the forefront of the movie. I wouldn't even really change much in the film, but if it was up to me, I would make. Laurel and Corey the LGBT representation in the film if it was up to me I mean like the cop this see this is the problem with making articles you know uh, promoting your LGBT character like this isn't Disney's first gay character it's like it's 40th gay character or at least that's how it feels I mean remember the you know the fool remember how well that went yeah you see when you publicize representation of LGBT characters this brings up expectations of what this character is going to do and what this character is gonna bring to the table when in reality this character did not contribute anything to the film and honestly you know that's fine she doesn't actually have to bring anything to the film like like just don't publicize it and make it like some grand statement like no honestly it would have been better to just not say anything in the promotional material and just have the character reference her girlfriend when she's trying to give advice that would have been great the way i see it the best way to normalize something is to include it and not make it a big deal that's it i'm not saying like go out of your way to make corey and laurel a lesbian couple like honestly just like more or less the film as it is it's great at having the two just like together like the chemistry those two characters have it's just great but one obstacle is in the way cult oh my god okay i don't have a problem well i have a problem with colt existing not necessarily anything he does in the film he's just there colt in and of himself he didn't add anything to the film really for me personally i would just take colt out of the film i would keep laurel single for all of the film just make it kind of seem like she's still not over the death of her husband which i would assume is the case for many people in real life and then she meets corey or the Mantic. See, that's the thing. I keep on interchanging between Corey and the Manticore because I mean, eh, Corey Manticore. I hey, both names sound fine to me in this regard. But yeah, Laurel meets Corey, and the two go on their adventure. I mean, yo, Corey is just such a fun character. Corey is my takeaway from this film, and Corey's adventure with Laurel. That is my takeaway from the film. And apparently, I'm not the only one that feels this way. This is probably gonna be one of the very few times I'm gonna agree with Tumblr because Tumblr be posting some. Out 
outlandish shit sometimes, boy. Hey, I swear. Mm. But I'd say right now, I, I'm more, more or less on the same page with people on Tumblr. And like I said, I'm not even saying that you gotta go out of your way to put them in a lesbian relationship. Just keep everything as it is. Of course, like I said, if it were up to me, I would just have the focus be on Corey and Laurel's story because I really did not expect to like that little side story. But yeah, like another reason why I would want to put them in the forefront is because the way I see it, Corey and Laurel kind of bring out the best in each other. Laurel convinces Corey to fly, something she hasn't done in years. And sure, Barley plants the seed of Laurel being a badass deep down, but like I said, if it were up to me, I would have Corey poke that bear a little more. You know, kind of like Yandu does to Peter in Guardians Volume 2. Ironic that they both star Chris Pratt. Because the way I saw it, it's clear that Corey, Corey was having somewhat of a crisis of identity beforehand, and given the world she inhabited at this current point in time, she was torn on who she really was and who she felt she should be. And considering all it took was barely one conversation to have her snap back to her old ways, it's pretty obvious that her grip on her current situation was tenuous at best. Like a great man once said, All it takes is a little push. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm thinking way too much into this, but where am I going with this? When Corey and Laurel are in the car, maybe Corey could talk about how Ian convinced Corey to go back to who she was meant to be, and Laurel could talk about how Barley kept calling her badass or... Alright, I don't really remember the exact terminology Barley was using. I know it sounded like some medieval folklore shit, I, I don't know. But the point is, it gets the ball rolling for what happens in the climax of the film, where both Corey and Laurel take charge in their own respective ways. No, no! I know, I know, I'm thinking way too much into this, but I feel that could be your LGBT representation right there. You don't even have to make it a big deal, put it like that. And it, yo, the, th the thing that really clenches it together for me is at the end, <laughs> Laurel just grabs her at like her battle axe and she's like, yeah, I'm going to meet the manticore for a night on the town. Is it just a girl's night out or is it a night with your, well, obviously it's not a night with your girlfriend because Colt is right there. But like, again, if it was up to me, Colt wouldn't even be in the picture. So it could be interpreted if it was up to me, either a night on the town or a night with your girlfriend. I say, is it too much to ask for both? Now, see, I have to address this. I personally hate when fans try to, you know, have their own headcanon and try to purposefully put two characters together romantically because it specifically fits into their own respective headcanon, and I hate that. Kind of like... <laughs> That is a conversation for another time. But again, I'm not the only one who feels this way, considering that me personally, I was so surprised at the chemistry these characters have. And even if you watch this film and you didn't see what I see, apparently people like the character of Corey on her own. So apparently I'm I'm right about something here. But yeah, like I said, just like the best way to normalize something is just to include it and not make it a big deal. I feel that could have been the route you could have taken in this film with Corey and Laurel. Uh, just keep the film as it is, uh, insert that little pep talk in the car like I proposed, take Colt all the way out. I'm pretty sure the film might have generated a little bit more buzz after the fact. I mean, there's nobody really going out to see the film in theaters, but you know, they watch it online. Yeah, go for it. I don't know. I just, I felt the need to say something because I didn't think too much about this, right? Every time Disney try to come out and say brand spanking new first LGBT character, I'm like, yo, you said this like X amount of years ago. And it didn't go over well then. So what are you saying? You keep advertising insignificant characters. Yeah, if you, yeah, it would be one thing if you was like, yo, all right, this is the protagonist of the film and the protagonist is gay. That would be one thing. I'd be like, oh shit. So there's literally, well, I was gonna say there's literally no escaping the fact that this character is gonna be gay. But then again, they could write around that. They could be like, oh, yeah, this character's gay, but this character has no love interest. So there is actually no way to tell that this character is gay unless the character keeps talking about, oh yeah, gay this, gay that, which, I mean, a way to make a character a caricature of what you're trying to do, but I don't even know what the what I'm saying, but you either bite the bullet and make the character an important character, not make their sexuality their character because there's a difference, or you just don't advertise the fact that you're putting insignificant characters 
in your film and calling them gay. What's the, apparently like what, uh, the, the Cyclops cop? Apparently the character wasn't even written to be gay. Uh, the voice actress, apparently like this was just something she did on the fly when she was recording her lines. Like, yeah, she just, she was the one who just put that in. Like, yeah, you know, I guess Disney just ran with it. Like, oh shit, girl on girl action. First gay character, yeah. I don't understand Disney's marketing sometimes. I really don't. And this even goes for Marvel. Like in Endgame, it was like the first openly gay MCU character. It's like nobody watched Jessica Jones. What 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 we doing out here, bro? Based on the track record of Disney constantly saying, "Yo, yeah, this is the first gay character." This sounds like a Disney move as opposed to a Marvel move. Apparently, the directors of Endgame said, "Yeah, the first openly gay MCU character," which I guess, yeah, it pretty much shows that. Yeah, all right, nobody's watching the Netflix shows. Oh, I'm really going in. I'm really going in. All right, Jerry Hogarth. She is a fucking asshole she is so immoral as an attorney all right here's the thing in the world of jessica jones everything sucks it would be one thing like everything sucks and then here comes this this ray of sunshine this goody goody two shoes who happens to be gay all right that would be a little unrealistic given the premise and the setting of jessica jones but yo <laughs> Jerry Hogarth is out of control in the first season. I I know I was talking about Onward, but bear with me. Um, Jerry Hogarth, like yo, she goes out of her way to antagonize her wife. Like, like yo, you are the one who cheated on your wife, and you're you're treating her like she's the asshole for being mad poor wendy that that was the name of her wife i felt so sorry for wendy i was like yo in order to deal with this immoral sociopath that she married wendy has to become even more hardened as a, as a result she's just like oh listen we we all go through shit. this this is gonna be no different we're just gonna talk about this we're gonna get back together and then jerry under no uncertain terms says now nah, we getting divorced and then wendy's like all right fine i guess i I gotta play ball. I wanted half. But now, since you're being a complete shithead, I'm taking all you got. And and then everything turns to shit once Kilgrave gets in the mix and then his actions directly led to Wendy's death. And that's the, that's the crazy part. Like, yo, like the girl that Jerry was cheating on Wendy with, right? She's the one who ends up killing Wendy. And Jerry, being the asshole sociopath she is, she's like, yeah, um, you're on your own now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yo, that's when the girl realized, like, yo, I made a mistake. I made a royal mistake. But I was talking about Onward, right? Um, yeah, so that was pretty much what I felt. Because, yeah, I saw Onward this morning. Yeah, all these thoughts were in my head. But then, like, yeah, Corey and Laurel just kind of made everything click for me. And I was like, man, this representation, man, it's some old bullshit. So yeah, I, I made I made a video about it. So uh, yeah, um, I'm actually working on a couple more videos. I don't know when they're gonna be out, but I know I'm definitely writing them as I currently speak. Well, obviously not as I currently speak because I don't have any writing utensils in my hand. But um, yeah, I'll make some new videos eventually, whatever. Uh, yeah, thanks for. I've never actually said this. Press the like button if you like the video. Oh my god, I feel like a shill. Uh, smash that like. I don't want to say smash that like. If you like the video, yeah, just click like. Uh, share the video to anyone you think might like the video. And that's all I know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I really don't know. But yeah, um, that's all I had to say. I'm the Methodical AAA. Peace.